suffer to all of you, dear brothers and sisters, in this very beautiful day, the day of the Lord. Especially today, as you can see on the screen, we call it Hadif Shabot Qudosh Ito, sanctification of the church. According to our Syriac calendar, today we consider it the new year of the ecclesiastical church, which is from this day, we begin to count every Sunday until next year, like Sunday before. And usually in our church, from this Sunday until Christmas, we have eight Sundays, and after that we have the Christmas or the Nativity of the Christ. So this day is very glorious day, and we can see from the name sanctification. Sanctification, if you want to understand it in other words, to make something holy. And to make something holy, that's mean to set something apart or to consecrate something for, some, for use, using it for one thing. So sanctification of the church mean call for all of us to be holy from inside because this is how the Bible inviting say be holy because your father in heaven is holy. The church invitation to everyone how we can be holy, how we can live the kingdom of God here on earth so when we will move from this earth, we will continue leaving the kingdom of heaven over their hundred percent. And I think maybe the best reading we can read in this Sunday, the Sunday, the reading that the fathers of the church prepared from book of Matthew, when the Lord Savior was with his disciples asking them, who do the people say that I, the son of man, am? In other words, Jesus was asking his disciples, what do the people say that I am, who I am for me, for you? And I think this question, we can ask it every day. Because every day we have to answer this question in order to consider ourselves as a true Christian, true believer, true followers of the Savior. So the question for us this morning, who is Jesus for you? And this question, we're still asking it. But please, today, before we leave the church, try to have a clear answer. Who is Jesus Christ for you, for each and every one of us. By the way, the enemy, the evil one, from day one, he want to confuse people about the character or the identity of a Christ. He want to make people doubt who is Jesus. He want them to be confused. If we go when the Lord was on earth, the Pharisees, the Jewish, the Sadduc Sadducees, all the people, the Jewish people, everyone was confused about Jesus' identity. So we can see how the evil one was playing to put doubt in every person's heart. Who is Jesus? The question is, why is the evil doing this? And in our day, we can see also a lot of maybe religions, about of maybe people, they still asking, is really Jesus God? By the way, if we will say Jesus is not God, believe me, all the world will stop fighting against the Christianity faith. But because we say Jesus is God, everybody fighting. And this fighting coming from the evil one. Again, for one reason, to make people confused. 
to make people not able knowing who is this person. The whole world, the people who are against the Christ, all those people, they still asking, who is Jesus? Is Jesus really God? And if we go through the history, we will see the history, the philosopher, the studies, a lot of them, even religions, they fight to prove that Jesus is a prophet only. He is not God. He is not a true God. He is not incarnate God. Because it's very hard to believe God become a man, has a flesh like you, like me. So always, always the evil one fighting for one reason, for, to make people doubt that Jesus is not God. And not only the people in the Old and in the New Testament or in risen time, even the evil one, sometimes he was confused. So he is actually raising confusion, but also sometimes because he was looking to Jesus. One time he was raising dead people. Another time healing somebody who was blind or paralyzed all his life. Another time, he blessed a little bit of bread and fish, and he gave it, it was enough for thousands of people. So he was thinking that this is maybe the Messiah, the Christ. But on the other hand, he saw this person kneeling down in front of his disciples, washing their feet. So I think even the evil one was confused about the identity of a Christ. And again, the question the same. Who is a Christ for you? Even the evil one who wasn't sure who was Jesus a Christ. All this confusion, dear brothers and sisters, it was for one reason only. To make all the people they don't believe in Christ as a God. And for this reason, he will make them or separate between them and between the salvation plan of the Savior. So the evil one made all this confusion for one reason. To make people not believe that Jesus is God. And if they don't believe, in other words, they won't be saved. But if we go back to the text that we read today, when the Lord was asking his disciples, what do the people say that I, the son of man, am? They say Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, or one of the prophets. We don't know. Then Jesus is saying, what about you? What do you say that I am? Then Peter, he said, you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one that God anointed him and sent him to save every one of us. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. In other words, you are the living and true God. What was the answer of the Savior? He said, blessed are you, Simon, Peter, in other words, the rock. Because flesh and blood did not reveal not because you're smart, Peter, you knew this answer, but because my father revealed this to you from above. If we will go back to what I was just saying, the evil want to make people confused about the divine nature of Jesus. But when Peter said that this is God, this is that you see the incarnate Jesus, he is God, the true God, the living God. Right away, the Lord told him, you are blessed. But be careful. You did not know this fact because you're so smart, Peter, but because the Holy Spirit, because my Father from above revealed this to you. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he said, no one can say that Jesus is Lord. No person on earth can believe that Jesus is God except by the Holy Spirit. I gave a long time, not really long time ago, sermon about the role of the Holy Spirit in our life. And I say the role of the Holy Spirit 
to make us believe that Jesus is God. And St. Paul, he said, no one can believe that Jesus is God except by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Lord said to Peter, blessed are you, Simon, Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And by the way, we have to believe. If we don't believe in this fact that Jesus is God, there is no salvation for us. The Lord said in the book of John, he said, this is the eternal life. What is the eternal life? He said that they, which is us, may know you, which is Jesus with capital Y, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In other words, there is no way to believe without the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, we refuse to accept this knowledge. That's why the book of Hosea says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. A lot of time we think that Jesus is a good person, Jesus is a good prophet, Jesus is a good teacher, Jesus was a good man, he did everything good. All this is not enough. Because if Jesus is not God, we don't need him anymore in our life. There was a good teacher, there are good teachers in the history, good people. But Savior, there is only one who is Jesus Christ. And the Lord said in the book of John also, he said, I am, I and my Father are one. In other words, Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. We remember in the story or parable, the prodigal son, the lost son, when the son decided to go back to his father, his father was waiting for him. And when he came back, he hugged him. He gave him the very, very fancy clothes. He brought him back the ring. This is what we need, dear brothers and sisters, to do today. To return to our Savior and believe in him as a God, as a Savior. Because without believing in him as a Savior, there is no way to the eternal life for any one of us. That's why... This Sunday, we call the sanctification of the church, is the Sunday to sanctify our heart, to make ourselves holy, which is to set our heart and our thought and our belief apart for the Lord. And we tell him, Lord, we believe in you. You are the Savior. I pray that all we can be holy, we can be a true believer in Christ because this reason the Lord came and become a man. May God bless you all with the prayer of ever Virgin Mary in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Also, I will just say a couple things, dear brothers and sisters, because tonight there is something they call Halloween. Almost everybody celebrates this event. Unfortunately, we try, again, as I just mentioned, the evil try to confuse people about the identity of a Christ. So people, they celebrate this event maybe more than Christmas, more than Jesus' birth. For one reason, believe me, just to make people confused and lost, to make people struggle in their life, to make everything normal, even participating in some of none or not a Christian behavior. Let's be careful and teach our kids that this is not a Christian event. Let's not participate in it. I'm not fanatic. I'm not trying to be like, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say the word is so hard, but believe me, we have as a parent's responsibility, as a church, we have role to play on earth. What is this role? What is our part to teach our kids how to believe in Christ 
and celebrate Jesus in our life, not anything else. Because the evil one doesn't want us maybe to go worship idols or different status or different God. But he wants just to put a little bit doubt in our heart, participating in this not a Christian behavior, and slowly, slowly, after 10, 20 years, we will change our identity. And this is what the evil one wants. So let's be awake and tell our kids that this day is the day of sanctification of the church. The day, the Catholic Church, they call it All Sins Day. Let's celebrate the blessing sins. Let's celebrate how we should be holy and sent. Let's teach our kids that this is not a Christian celebration or any kind Christian event. May God bless you all and protect you in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen.